Howdy kids, it's AJ back again, and welcome to my first tutorial on what I hope to call discrete math. This tutorial is going to compromise a lot of the thinking and abstraction you need to do to be a good programmer. And today, in this first part, we are going to start off with sets. A set is a very basic collection of well-defined elements. Now, what does the word well-defined mean? Well-defined just means that it is possible to decide if a given object belongs to the col collection or not. Now, this could, a set could be anything. A set could be anything. It could be the blackbirds beside your hat beside your house, it could be how many friends you have, it could be the number of programming languages you, you know, it could be the type of books that you have, it could be anything. And the most basic way to describe sets is that have a finite number that you can count with your hand, at least, or not infinite, is by listing the elements of the set between braces. For example, the set of all positive integers less than 5 can be shown by a set 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's it, because I said less than 5 and positive integers. So note 0 is not counted because I said positive integers and 0 is not positive nor negative. Now I'd like to point out a few properties of sets here. First of all, the order in which you make a set in between the braces does not matter. So a set of 2, 1, 3, 4 is the same as the original set we made, and so is a set of backwards proportion. So, for instance, like that. And so order does not matter in a set, it just matters that it's within the set, within the braces. And Another thing that is important about a set is that duplicates do not matter. So again, making this set again, oopsie, we notice that I could do make duplicates of 1 and 2, or all of them if I wanted to, and it would still be equal to the same set because duplicates do not matter. And that is two very important things to remember about sets. I'm just going to write them down to further hammer this down. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the element symbol. Oops. I just need to copy that. And and now we need to work. Uh, we're going to show. Some, I'm going to show some other symbolism of how to donate that a element you have is in fact inside an element, a set that you have, by using this symbol. Now let's say we again have the set one, two, three, four, and we want to use an expression to say that one is an element of that set. Well common mathematical terms is we say 1 is an element of the set 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's say we gave the set a name. Usually we denote sets by capital letters. So A, capital B, capital C, but just as long as the capital letter is the proper notation. So we could say A is an element, we could also say 1 is an element of A, or 1 is an element of this set, which is equal to A, so it's the same thing. And another thing we can, another symbol we can use is the reverse of this symbol, and let's say we have 5, I can say 5 is not an element of A by using the same symbol, this little kind of curved E, and putting a slash in between it. That doesn't look that good, let me get rid of that, but it's a slash kind of right down the middle, and that denotes that it is not an element of that set. Now, this is actually a very basic principle for which all math is learned in. It is something that 
we use every day, even your human brain is. And that's something great about programming logic is that your brain does it on a very high level that you never think of it. Now we're going to practice some questions to recuperate what we just went over in terms of sets. We have a set A that's 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, and C. It contains letters and numbers, which is okay. We can put anything we want in a set. And we're going to go through some questions. If they're true or false, is 2 an element of A? And if you want to go over it yourself, please feel free to pause the video and think about this yourself. Obviously, if you've been paying a little bit of attention, the answer to this question is true. 2 is an element of A. 2 is contained within A. Now, here's another kind of little trick. I'm trying to put tricks in my questions, so you can do it. Is A an element of A? No, that is not true. That is false. Basically, am I saying is the set contained within the set? And that is not true. And back to the third example, there is something else that we need this for that we will come back to later. But for now, A is not an element of A for obvious reasons. And is C an element of A? Of course, that is also true because C is contained within A as C is within A right here. And <clears throat> For our next question, we are going to give the set of letters in each word by listing the elements of the set. And here we go. We have Mississippi. Now again, I encourage you guys to stop if you don't know. And we have to write the set of the letters in this word Mississippi. Now what would be contained in the set that represents Mississippi? M, I, S and P. That's it. Because all that the Mississippi contains, strangely, is duplicates. It has four S's, which all can be represented just by that one S, and P, which can just be used by that two S, and also the four I's and the one F. So simply by writing this set of MISP, you can represent the whole word of Mississippi in a set, only with four elements, which is very nice. And now for a very tricky question. I have here a kind of interesting set. I have a set and then within this set I have another set containing five and six. And my question to you guys is, is a true or false question. Is 5 and 6, the little subset of 5 and 6, an element of A. I'm going to end the tutorial here and go over this in the next tutorial and see if you guys see if you guys can figure out and I'll make sure to try to explain it as well as possible. Thank you guys and have a great fantabulous day.